Hello and welcome back. Today we're playing Victoria 3 as Great Britain. Last episode we went to war against the Japanese shogunate, and the reason why we did this was to open up the market, and this provides a few benefits. We also managed to break up China a little bit more, because China joined in along, but it would have been a lot easier if they didn't. We would have preferred China did not, but what the reason why you want to open up their market is because you eventually want to bring them into your market because they have very low standard of living and they also have very high population. These two things combined when they're in your market means you're going to siphon off a ton of their pops as well as they will drive a ton of uh, consumption of your lower tier, you know, uh, production goods. Because what happens late game once you start getting an increased standard of living, which we're starting to pick up a little bit now, is your textile mills, for example. The, they make a ton of clothes, and the price of regular clothes just goes super, super low, and the t price of luxury clothes goes super, super high. So having more people in your market consuming the regular clothes is a really big deal for profitability. Um, we will now try and export a bit more to the Japanese market to hopefully make them not antagonistic. Now that we actually can do trade with them, we have an interest in the region, so we should be able to trade with them, unless it's kind of just a little bit buggy because they just got opened up. Uh, they got split open. All right, so we will export to them stuff that's expensive in their market, like glass, and also regular furniture and regular clothes will be another thing we export. look to export to them. And where is regular furniture? It, of course, is alphabetized, but I don't know the alphabet. And then uh, we will also export glass to them, which will make our industries more profitable and will make them more amicable, relatively speaking. And then these are kind of the things that are expensive in the market. What's cheap? Sugar is cheap. So we will switch to import and we will look to import the goods that are cheap from them. And these might not be profitable. We're not hyper concerned with whether or not they're profitable. We just want to increase the volume of trade with them. Uh, we could also import oil. This is an interesting idea because they do have a lot of whaling there. And they don't quite have the PMs, but we don't have much demand for oil ourselves. We could import tea as well. And this will make them produce more of these goods. We can also import silk. Really fairly profitable. And dyes and fish. Fish might be profitable. We are building a bit more canneries and stuff. And we'll leave it at that. And we will have a go or be off on our way. Now, we have a bit of uh, infamy available. You generally want to stay under 25 infamy, that way you can play the Diplo game. And then um, you also want to always be above zero infamy, that way you are always decaying. Because if you're not using your decay, you're losing it. We will be turning a corner in terms of uh, this stuff. Because currently, Great Shing is giving us war reps for 30k. And we are researching steel buildings. So once we get steel frame buildings, I think this episode in total, we're probably going to be going up to 1k construction. Um... I suppose right now we'll increase consumption construction a little bit manually, but we're going to be looking to take off quite a bit. So, let's do this. And then, we don't mind running a deficit here as well. Uh, and then we're going to look for a productive war. Now, we would want to integrate New Granada, and we can. We are a little concerned about France joining in. This would be kind of annoying. We don't have a direct front with New Granada, which means we would get to land them, which we actually do want to have if we are going to annex them and France joins in. Let's see, it will cost us 2.7 infamy, which isn't a lot, but luckily we're already decaying, so we probably will still be able to decay. Let's declare this and just hope, hope, hope that France doesn't join against us. Let's also make sure we're improving relations with France because we want to be improving relations with France because we are looking to get the achievement where we expel their diplomats when they like us. And so in order to do this, we have to have good relations with them. Job creators is activated and then deactivated. Big Sag, we wanted to keep it activated. Um, this is also another thing that we've been working on, trying to have ha these three interest groups happy and powerful because they give real big banger bonuses. It's been reactivated. This is 20% capitalist investment pool contributions big. So is the 50% migration attraction. And the trade unions, both of theirs, is really good. The workforce ratio is really good. And the manufacturing industry's throughput is good. And so we will be continuing along that way. Um, let us take a look. So we are hoping they just back down. They are. They should be 75 fearful. They do have gold reserves, so this might pop off. But the real big problem is France might join. And uh, if France joins, we will be very sad. Apparently they can't join. 
so there so we when we we had a truce with them when we tried to go to war for new granada at the first place and they were able to join when we were trying to puppet them so i guess they cannot join if it is a war between a leader and a subject but they can join if it is a war not between a leader and a subject in which case this war should pop off okay i guess they can join i guess they back down what okay it says they have a truce so they can't like be swayed right and then they joined and then they left this is wild and then they back down okay well the game is sometimes very very opaque with what's going on because it shows them grayed out and says hey you have a truce which to me implies you can't do this thing and then <laughs> and then it's just like oh nope just kidding here you go we want to uh build up quite a bit oh and we could do these confederation events so here's what we will do uh we will build a whole bunch more government admins with the understanding we will be integrating these uh, short-ish in a short-ish period of time so why don't we build those up quite a bit and of course we're hemorrhaging money but that's because the investment pool contribution will not pay for those and we're looking to get up to 1k surplus so we can do the Panama survey we do have to swap over all these PMs, but let's just take a look at these events because a lot of these events are unique to, um, you know, the UK, and I have not gotten to see them before. So we desire that all Canadian colonies merged into one and form a national Canada. To achieve this, we should confederate. So this just unifies Canada. God save the Queen. But there's still lower Canada. All right, let's federate Australia, I guess. Interesting. So what this will do is the two Australian colonies will be unified. So I'm guessing it's just these two. I'll save the queen. They annexed the United Tribes. I didn't even see where United Tribes was, though. Very underwhelming. These expeditions were so buggy on release, I just never want to click them ever again. Revolutionary of our time. We're super happy with everyone becoming radicals because it makes it really easy for us to make legitimate governments, you know, uh, with like interest groups that we want. Look at this. We could just do this. We're still super righteous. And this will allow us to, you know, do something maybe a little bit naughty in terms of the petite bourgeoisie who unfortunately don't support some of these things but i guess since they're radical they don't support some of the ones we would want to pass where we get a little naughty okay uh this tax is just so huge so we're just gonna tell them they should be more realistic the negative events on proportional taxation are so big but we really want it to pass but we don't want to pay the taxes. We'd rather double our construction in the near future, and which we will be doing with the steel frame buildings. Or that's the plan. I think we have steel here. Let's see if this place is fully employed. Wow, it's fully employed. We will be going up to 51 there then. And we will be looking to make sure the railways are all good. Just adding a couple extra railways here and there. Do have a pretty full construction queue. Our market is quite large as well. This is one thing we've been working on quite a bit, speaking of. Let's try and see. We can absolve obligations and pull people in. We're just doing a quick survey of the people we are feeding money to. I think we want the trade unionist skin power uh, as a general heuristic, but we want to make sure we keep all three of these powerful and all three of them happy, which is quite difficult to do. Uh, but if you can do it, you just the bonuses you get from the three are tremendous. And a big thing that's helping us is our super righteous government. And I think that's helping us to have that super righteous government is the Forbidden City, which is giving us plus two legitimacy, 22 legitimacy from having had a state in government. Uh, I think this is overtuned and should be nerfed. But it's like PvE game, so like who cares? But uh, even still, it's uh, just a very large bonus uh, that doesn't make a bunch of sense. We will absolve our obligation with the Shogunate. And now we are cordial with them, so we can try and invite them to the Customs Union, but they're antagonistic, so they say no. Uh, we can invite these guys, except they say no. Uh, once we have a... If someone's greater than minus 58, so minus 45 will do, you can uh, use an obligation to pull them in. So this is kind of what we're working on to try and expand the market. 
Well, we of course can declare another war here. What am I doing? If you're not using your decay, you're losing it. Also, we have to switch all the PMs and stuff over here. But that's okay. I suppose we could maybe pop at them. This will give us quite a bit, I imagine. Yeah, we don't want to go over minus 25 or 25 infamy. Um, we could just annex Iran Hay. I think it's probably not the best use of our... You would want, want to go after Trucal States. Austria sides with the enemy and France can. I don't think we want that heat. Uh, we could go after Booligan. Booligan's generally a good one. And I think we're kind of okay if China joins at this point, because we'll just keep on busting China up, uh, I think. And I think they're the big one that can join. Oop, let's zoom in on the correct thing. Okay, you got me. Uh, and we can just conquer Booligan. This will give us 4.5. Who else can join? Just Great Shing is kind of the only big one. So we'll just conquer the state. And we will move Hugo over there. Oh, we can't. Okay, well, he will be mobilized, I guess. I forgot this is not a front, because there's mountains in between. No big deal. Still going to be trying to get up to 1k construction here. We can. I guess China declaring war on us is a little annoying, because it does get rid of the war reps they are paying us. Uh, and so, to that degree, it is uh, a little bit annoying. Portugal... Yeah, we are damaging relations with them because we want to puppet them, and they're currently a protectorate. We can afford around seven more infamy. And I see that the industrialist cloud has dipped below 20, so... I think if we exit reform government, we are currently... Oh, we're not suppressing anyone, we'll just have more consumption taxes. Oh, we're so, so close. Here we go. If we pay a little bit extra we will be able to institute another consumption tax or remove a consumption tax and bolster the industrialists. Also, in general, I kind of like to be on the paying the bureaucrats more train, although this is expensive. Great Shing sides with blue again, so we probably will get a war pop-off. We will mobilize everyone, and we will take care of this. Now we will put Hugo here. This guy, I guess, we'll put here. Kind of just had a really big war with them. Uh, kind of a little bit annoying. Okay, and I think there's still a decent chance they back down here. And yeah. And what we will do is we will just continue to live countries from them. Manchuria seems like a fine lib. We will make sure we get the war reps from them as well. And we will... I guess we liberate two more countries. Could liberate subjects. Oh, I like liberate Jozan. It has a ton of pops. So I guess we just liberate all three of these. Or what if we... Transfer subject. Is that not a war goal? No, it's not. We could puppet Booligan. It's not really worth it. We could conquer North Borneo as well. And since this war pops off, I think we kind of like that. We will incur a little bit of extra infamy if they back down, but I don't think they are likely to back down here. And then we can liberate a subject and liberate Jozan. And then we can, or I guess we'll save the last 30 maneuvers because I forgot this is Indonesia, not over here. So there are more people who could join. But yeah. Should be pretty nice here. I thought that this should unify in Canada, but it didn't really do what we wanted it to. So far, it also just seems that the expeditions just give you prestige, and we're already the number one great power. We're not fighting for prestige, so it's kind of whatever. It's a nothing burger. It's kind of how it feels. In terms of the decisions, all these surveys, 
they don't seem too too great uh, and they tie your guys up not the best Philippines sides with blue again which do we want to do anything oh the Philippines is independent Camp pop of the Philippines. How many states do they have? They have a few. Okay. I think we're still just going to release another country from Beijing, but a little unfortunate. They're almost certainly not going to back down now. So I think we liberate, liberate. Shaozhou or Guangdong, if they're in there. Kind of want to focus on down here in this region we would like to liberate. I wish it highlighted which states it would release. We know it could go Shandong here, which would be fine. We liberated them before. I guess Shandong is fine. And now we don't have to worry about this, except for the fact if someone else joins, it's a little bit annoying. Like, we might have wanted to puppet the Philippines. That's kind of a lot of uh, Diplo to puppet them. Or, sorry, a lot of infamy. I don't think that's overall going to be worth it. But I think this war pops off. I think we take all of Bulligan here, and then uh, we're in pretty good shape. Overall, I think Great Xing is having problems. They don't have any debt, so their problems are not too, too big. And they will stop paying us money. I think they're, they pay us money until the war pops. So we're going to lose 30k of our income. But this is fine. We are making an additional 85k into the investment pool, which is growing. Which is the main reason why we're going steel frame buildings. So we can increase our construction without increasing the amount of laborers we're paying for that construction. We also generally did want to focus on bringing some of the peasants out from the yard, uh, with the exception of in the home territories, because there are no peasants. But like, for example, here we still have quite a lot of peasants that we can bring out, so do some of this. And we also want to, you know, try and get the max throughput bonus if we can in some of these places. And so this will be kind of to the end of increasing our construction. It will be to increasing this, which increases our standard of living. We would like to float somewhere in the high teens for quite a while, I think, would be uh, kind of our target. And I guess we would want to land maybe with... So we want to land Bulligan, I think, but maybe we actually just want to land China and land Zhejiang and push the capital as quickly as possible. And worry about taking Bulligan last. So let's try that. Uh, Roderick Black. We need to take one of the 20 stack guys. So Miles would work. Miles Goshen, or whatever it's, however it's pronounced. He'll be on his merry way. This guy stays here. And I believe we'll be releasing Manchuria here. I suppose Manchuria maybe is not the best release, considering we're trying to, like, chop them up. We want to border gore them as hard as possible. We do now have over 1k here, so we will survey the Panama Isthmus. And, of course, build the Panama Canal. We haven't even switched over all the PMs here that we could have. Let's just take a quick look. It looks like they're uh, kind of in okay shape here. We kind of don't want... Yeah, we don't want this... We don't really want this. It is at full employment. So I think we won't delete it, but we'll instead, you know, look to expand maybe the logging mo mainly in these places to make them a little bit happier with the fact that they were conquered. And we need wood anyways. And you can use each use a bit of a rail. We are getting Persian migration. Excellent. From Russia, too. What's your... Ooh, your people are uh, struggling. 
getting a nice little push here early on. We of course will get should get a fast push here. Hopefully we can get in on the capital. And one nice thing about leaving the Beijing in their hands, even though you give up the Forbidden City, is it's really easy to land Beijing if you just want to have, fight them a lot. Loyalists have been going up. These have been going down, generally. Not currently, though. We are sitting on quite a bit of excess authority here, so we will reduce these taxes again. Uh, or reduce these payments. And we can reduce them one more notch, I think. And now we are making quite a bit of money. We are getting ready to turn the corner in regards to our construction. As soon as this finishes, we'll be going up to 1k. Uh, which will be, you know, kind of what the game's about. Just increasing the construction rate. If there's, like, when in doubt, you just up construction. That should be enough for us to double when we get steel, I think. We are also notably going up to 51 for the max throughput bonus there. Let's take a look at our government. I'd love to get these guys happier. Ooh, what just happened here? We just had a huge change. It made the industrialist no longer powerful. Did someone die? You're still a radical. Still happy with us. But your clout just collapsed. With the when the election popped. Okay, so it does recalculations there. And this is one thing that's hard about the game is keeping the industrialist strong is generally difficult. And so when it recalculated. These guys all want to join that party, though. What happened if we just put everyone in? Yeah, we don't. so we don't want to do that, but that we only have one party, so the party is going to win with all the votes. So we will be super, super legitimate because everyone is radical. Radical, 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 and, uh, well, you're just a reformer, which is almost the same thing. So we will just leave the government as is. And we get in there, and notice we are going to just push super, super fast before they can get anyone on the point. Um, on the point. Too much overwatch. Uh, but we will be pushing towards the capital here, and hopefully we get another tick before anyone arrives. We get a philanthropy event. We really just want to pass this law, so we're just going to take the enactment chance, but man oh man, it has been a struggle. We have taken so many ticks of this. It is a... Uh, embarrassing how we haven't gotten through and one of the another one of the really nice reasons is we get of righteous government is we get minus 50 percent enactment time which allows you to push the laws real fast come on my guy why you gotta do this oh you're just gonna get clapped by south australia by themselves oh they have no army cool they can do all the work so Something I was talking about last time, is if we go into our tech, this is not a, a feature we have experienced too, too much in all of our runs. Um, we have nothing gnat spreading from production. Nothing gnat spreading from military. Actually, is this gnat spreading? Oh, okay, so breach loading artillery is gnat spreading. And from society, we have nothing gnat spreading. Not even cameras, we, that's some old progress. And so generally speaking, um, Natural spread is a good way to pick up technology. We are not benefiting from it at all because we are being really efficient with the way we are picking our techs because we are picking all of the tier two techs before going on to tier three because there is a malice when you have missing techs to you have this ahead of time penalty. And so it's like 14 months for a tier three tech, but for a tier four, it's four years. What we are gonna do is we are gonna do something inefficient um, in terms of unlocking all the technologies uh, like themselves. But I believe the reason we're going to do this is we're not really not spreading a lot of technologies. We're going to go malaria prevention and let other countries start to pull ahead in society tech and production tech. That way we get the natural spread uh, back. And in exchange, we will be ahead of time on malaria prevention, which I'm hoping lets us kind of carve out spots in the Congo to cut off people's entry into the Congo. Because if we can get this and we can get this and this and this, we will be the only colonial power in the Congo, which will be super overpowered. And so this is why we're going malaria 
first because I think as in terms of text to be ahead of time on, this is one of the very strongest. The other one would probably be like uh, squad infantry or something like that. Some military PM would also be really good. Um, but we're going to go for this one. <sighs> Don't know why it is split like that, but okay. That's a weird, weird thing. Looks like our boys are taking care of it. Um, so yeah. Unfortunately, this war is about to pop off. Let's look and see if we have any... So we have a bunch of extra guys in the North CHQ. We will recruit the petite bourgeoisie guy. And we will put him... Oh, he can't go on this front? Why not? That's weird. Alright, so it's Auburn Reed. We will navally invade Bulligan then. Hey, why can't we invade Bulligan? Okay, we can. And we'll have this other guy raid the cowboys up in this bizzle. Which should, like, these guys are connected by sea, so raiding the convoy should hamper them quite significantly. Oh, yes, and we also wanted to turn on the steel bills. So let's turn this on. This will give us quite a wall of it, but quite a lot of construction. We'll take, well, actually, no, let's not, let's not do it all at once. I think we should do it piecemeal. So we'll do it there, and uh, I think Yorkshire is where we have the steel. So let's do there and there. Let things adjust a little bit. And then continue on our merry way. We, of course, are having trouble employing here. And here, let's max out the paper. Set you on, you are on auto expand, good for you. Give you a couple of these. Gold discovered in Hokkaido, hot damn. So that 51, maximum throughput bonus. And then we'll add a couple of these. And who could forget the boom booms? 51, max throughput bonus. And on these three places, we will turn on the steel frame buildings as well. So they construct faster. Yay. Huzzah. And then we're gonna be landing them soon here. We're going to need more of government administrations. We will expand them in the areas we're planning on incorporating. We will incorporate all of Ireland as just as soon as the Panama survey finishes and we'll have a bunch of extra, you know, infra. Or not infra, but this resources. Construction is up to 900. And I think we can still swap stuff over, but our construction goods are pretty expensive. I'm waiting to... We're going to build more steel. Or how productive is our steel? It should be pretty good, right? Yeah, and it's like fully employed too? Yikes. We will just take the... We, want, we really just want to get this law passed, so we will take the enactment chance, because... If our enactment chance is over 50, we might take the other side of that, but we really just want to get this law through. I think we just expand steel a little bit more, right? And then we'll also add some iron to the queue, because that will help make steel cheaper as well. The inputs are cheaper. And then we have a pretty full queue. Let's take a look at the war. The war is going quite well. We are pushing it. We get, we don't have a front with Rev South Australia, so we couldn't put a guy on it, right? Or am I just insane? No, we couldn't. So I'm not sure how this is going to go, but this is one of our subjects. We can cancel the Panama survey. And we already clicked to Confederate Canada. Did we make a mistake? Two Canadian colonies will be unified. Okay, so we need to federate repeatedly over time, I think. Because I'm assuming that this modifier goes away. 
Yeah, it goes away in 17 months. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. Huh? Feared but not loved. We can decrease our infamy by 10. I think I like that. And let's just go through our interactions in terms of obligations. Can we change you to the customs union? No. So let's absolve the obligation, Kalkin. Formosa, we can't change you to the customs union and we don't have an obligation. We have an obligation with the Shogun and we can absolve it in order to make them amicable. They won't join because they were antagonistic, but now they're just wary. Uh, as kind of, I guess, they should be. We're close to being able to invite them. I think, yeah, we just need a obligation and we will be able to get them in. We have an obligation on these guys and we can get them in and then we can stop bankrolling them. And Burka don't have an obligation on them, so that's going to be a bit difficult to swing. Hmm. That split is a little bit annoying. I suppose we could just do this. Wow. The Charis party won all the votes. Most legitimate party ever. Now we could add either one of these guys to the party and they will stick in. Uh, but we are more legitimate without them. Kind of want to get bolster up the bro up a little bit. But uh, do not have the political will for this right now. We do want to get the industrialists back to being powerful again. So we are doubling their bonuses. So. And maybe we can swap more of these over. Yeah. So we have basically effectively doubled construction. Um, the classic uh, goal of any type of episode is doubling construction. We will enforce some boogan here a second. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. I probably am not. All right, do you have a lot of peasants? You do. Let's find something for you to do. Let's get you to 51 here. Four max throughput bonus, and we get the Borneos. The both of us, yes. And you have an industry, but do you have a lot of peasants still? No, you don't, so we'll, we'll, we won't worry about that too much. What is this here? Well, we don't mind them losing popularity, so that we'll take that. Again, just keep on getting unlucky ticks on enacting this. A little bit unfortunate, but, you know, it also is what it is. Don't have a problem with them colonizing. We are starting to finish up the, the last vestiges of colonies that we can do that aren't uh, going to be slowed down. Let's just put them all down, because we'll need them eventually. Get some Azerbaijani migration. And I think we just crank up the rest of these to steel frame here. Because we can afford it. Um, oh, this feels so good. Being over 1k construction again. I'm in my element. This is what, we're, this is what it's all about, my friends. You're just going to add a bit extra of these, and let's take a look at what's going on in Beijing. Of course, they probably have some... We're just going to add one, because they'll use it eventually, because there's so much rural stuff. But we will also kind of uh, help that become more and more rural stuff. We'll just do this, and this, and this, which will kind of help our lower rung pops for all those. But we'll just add 50 total. Who cares? Oh, and our Boom Booms. We need more Boom Booms. I forgot Steel uses Boom Booms. So I think our Boom Booms are maxed... Are not maxed out, but... Oh, okay, we just have a ton in the queue here, and they're gonna finish soon. We have... We're gonna more than double our Boom Boom production. Hell yeah, brother, but this should be on, uh... Oh, we can't put it... That makes sense. Till we get a higher level of Furts. You gotta be Furting me. That's probably too many troops. 
We don't need that many there, but uh, I guess they're involved in a fight right now. Well, they're going to take the entire thing, so we can move the other guys, the 20 stack. We can move them here. U.S. colonizes Alberta. So maybe we want to colonize here. Because that looks like it won't be too hard to cut off. And uh, it might be the more important spot to cut off. We will also put a port down there. Sweden, Sweden, Sweden offers us a defensive pact and an obligation if we accept. This will allow us to pull them into a customs union, absolving the obligation, but I don't want to run the diplomacy of this. But we will, our plan is to defend Sweden if someone attacks them. But I think I'll say no. Very tempted to say yes, though. Whoa, what's this? First Philip. Oh, I forgot. Okay, fair. I thought the war. I thought it was against China, not the Philippines. I forgot the Philippines were in this. That's my mistake. It's kind of a big one. Hopefully, it doesn't cost us. This guy's currently not involved in the fight, so we're just going to send him off. I understand he was the big boy on this front, but, uh... You know? Just trying to get it through. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's fix up our PMs, because we've taken a lot of states here. So, as I suspected, we can swap up a bunch of PMs. A lot of advances, decreasing enactment chance. Just what we love to see. Man, we have gotten so unlucky trying to pass this law. It's going to make such a big difference, too. Really important, really strong law to get through. Unfortunate. Yikes, we're decaying quite quick here. Because they don't have any war goals on us. This is unfortunate. Looks like... We might have to land there, because there's no front. Have a bunch of extra this, so we will start incorporating these guys, which was the plan. So it's always the plan. Of course, they have a bunch of peasants. Let's see what's expensive in our market. The boom booms. So, but we're about to finish a whole bunch of boom booms. We're not about to finish a whole bunch of glass, I don't think. So we'll make glass here. And we'll just add the 51 stack and add a bunch of railroads at the front. Ooh, baby, this is what I was waiting for. Let's see it. Uh, this is because we uh, drained the investment pool entirely, so now we are... <sighs> We're going to continue constructing a little bit like this in this deficit, but I'm not certain how long we can maintain this. We might have to increase taxes. Let's take a look. We're super righteous, so we can't afford to increase taxes, so we'll increase it one notch. And then we're going to wait, because we do want this to trend upwards to the mid to high teens. So we're going to leave this on minus 300k for a little bit, but we're probably going to increase. We get an obligation from the Japanese Shogunate, we enforce on Great Shing, and we get the landing on the Philippines. So all this is coming up pretty good. We will start bankrolling them. And Manchuria. Trying to get them into the Customs Union. And Japan... We will probably absolve that obligation because they're still wary. And they would not accept. Ooh, they're so close to accepting. We'll just absolve and we'll get them on the next round. Yeah, we will get them on the next round. We can even offer them an obligation and then they'll pull us into a defensive pact. I don't want to use the excess Diplo. Just be a little bit patient on this one. And, uh, well, let's actually see. They don't have any... We can just propose a white piece. They'll take it. And let's take a look at our infamy. We did get that event that gave us minus 10, so... We can afford a 20 infamy war here. And so we want to think, well, where do we want to declare a war that uh, will be fairly productive?
Hmm. We have 20 infamy, so we could just puppet Chile. I think Chile is not in a very expensive puppet, if I recall correctly. They are still neutral, so wait, why can't we? Oh, because we're still. Got it, got it, got it. Well, I think we can naval invade. Yeah. But we do want to think about. We are going to get a war soon. Um, but we can do it. We also still can reform, but we don't want to. And we see standard living starting to dip on the back of this increasing taxes. That's okay. Uh, I think we can just build through this. Now, what are we... We're surely... The deficit, deficit is in boom booms. Yeah, we don't have enough boom booms. All, one of the reasons I was tempted to go dynamite or... Yeah. Because I think dynamite does give the PM. Why don't we put these all in the front? Oop. Mongolia obligation expired. Darn. I think they're already in our customs union anyways. We can invite them. We can get an... We have an obligation with them. We can invite them probably. Use obligation. Yes. Stop bankrolling them now. Hopefully they don't just get re-annexed. Decreasing enactment chance by... Come on, my guy. This has been... I've gotten so unlucky trying to pass this law. It is unreal. Uh, so we can get Echoes of the Revolution. We can spread it to Dutch East Indies and get a bunch of approval. Or, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. And then we, I think we have, yes. These guys are not powerful, but they're about to be powerful. And then we will have the triple, the triple up of all these three, which is really, really great. Because those guys are the best ones. And we are being pretty good about maintaining economies of bonus. Economies of bonus. Economies of scale bonus. Let's try and see where we have the most peasants other than Beijing. It's Munster. Munster is getting incorporated. We are building stuff up in Munster to take care of this. And so after Munster, it's Ulster. So let's see about getting Ulster some industry. So we are tabula rasa on Ulster. And we are going to need... We're going to need tools. I think the boom booms will get taken care of. So we're going to go out on a limb and build tools here instead. And we're going to go up to 51. And then we'll add some rails. Now, uh, let's look at the next place that has the most peasants that is in incorporated territory. Leicester, and then Midlands. Midlands has a bunch that it's going to have up. And then we can just up this to uh, the 51 for max economies of scale, throughput bonus. And then get some rails on that. And then I'm guessing this place will have a lot of peasants as well. At 310k and then well what do we need why don't we make more boom booms here as well we will put some at the front of the queue i'm gonna put 11 at the front and then we'll put the rest of this 51 stack at the back we probably won't need more for a while after that and then midlands had a decent amount but we are building the boom booms in midlands so that should take care of that now, of course, one of the problems is we have so much fertilizer, and fertilizer is so, so cheap, we can export it, and we want to export it as much as possible, but we are running out of convoys. So, um, what we will do is we are currently expanding a whole bunch in all of these. Let's just add some ports here. And this way, it will help get us convoys to do more trade as well as work on the infrastructure. Uh, something I kind of always forget a little bit. Meh, I'm probably not as attentive as I should be on that front. Okay. Really wish we could release Persia from Russia if we fought Russia, but that's not how this works. Uh, can we invite you to the customs union using the obligation? We can, so let's stop and calling you then. And we another one enters the inferno. And let's take a look here. Oh, we're so, so close to getting unbalanced the way we want. 
Victoria is very strong with this plus oh, what is this she also got celebrity command or she got masterful diplomat so this upgraded and then I didn't think she had celebrity commander before so now she just has 140 loved absolutely disgusting she is so good we're getting 140 pop, uh, authority from her which is allowing us to do so much, uh, despite us having laws that normally don't give us a lot of flat authority, which is, it's just... Oh, I hate this event so much. We gotta come off this. We're not gonna let it tick at 5%. God, this is the second time we've gone through so many and then had to come off of it. Uh, can we restrict child labor more? No, nope. can we... We can do regulatory bodies... Uh, let's see how happy are people. These guys aren't very happy, but if we switch to regulatory bodies, they will become happy. We kind of want regulatory bodies anyways, so we will do that. Now we take a look, and they are happy with us. They're almost 10 happy, so we're not quite getting the bonus anymore, but we're close. And uh, we will be getting this war done soon. A political economy. All right, let's take a look which one we can suffer. All right, we can suffer the industrialists getting worse at us, matter at us, rather. Yeah, this is really good. Those are auto expanding. Let's take the infrastructure because those might be. Nope, still got some. Okay. We, of course, will want to build a port here because we, of course, will build stuff there and then we'll forget we built stuff there as it goes. And what was the. I think we're at zero infamy now. No, nope, we're close though. Bloody close. I mean, we could do something nutter like take New York. I don't hate taking New York. It's a really good state. We could also bust up the United States a little bit if we just like went conquer state New York. It is 35 infamy, so we'd have to run that for a while. East India Company may side with us. Don't they have to? Oh, they're a dominion, not a puppet. That's right. Didn't grant them independence. Uh, hmm. They're also notorious. Love what they're doing with the place. Super love that they're just coming in and just slapping them around over here. Uh, might even want to enter a defensive pact to make them... No, no, okay. We have like an auto defensive pact with them. Could establish a colony here. Or here, I guess. I think that those areas do not have severe malaria. We could push in. Um... So I, right now I'm deciding whether I want to puppet. I guess I could annex, start annexing some of these guys, but that's not enough infamy. We will not get, we could puppet Venezuela. I do like this. I don't like that France has an interest in the region and France likely comes in. And I mean, I think we could beat up France now, but we don't want to keep fighting them. <sighs> okay. Um, can we annex Cape Colony? No, 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 we're thinking about this the wrong way. We need an expensive, we need a high. Puppeting, wow, there's so much infamy to puppet Sokoto. I was going to say puppeting Sokoto is reasonable, but it's not. Uh, annexing Congo would be reasonable. This is nine infamy. Uh, they are very likely to just back down, and it helps to lock our opponents out. Uh, now let's see, you are, yeah, we're damaging relations with you, so, I like just conquering Congo then. It's giving us 9 infamy. Uh, I don't think anyone can join that's going to make them not fearful enough to just give us the state. And so this will allow us to, you know, just accrue some infamy and then, like, annex Cape Colony or something. Or annex, uh, Argentina. You know, who will only give us two infamy for that annex. And I think we can... 
Oh, I don't think we can federate just yet. Because we have the modifier for two years. But we want to continue along federating these guys. Uh, that way we can just annex them all in one go. I suppose this could turn into a world conquest run conceivably. But this is not the intention at this point. The intention is mainly just getting these two achievements. So we're trying to make France like us. Uh, to that end, who are their rivals? Us and the Ottomans? Yeah, okay, that's not good. Spain sides with the Congo. I don't think that's enough to bring him out of minus 75. It's not. But we will want to, you know, add war goals on Spain that do not give us any infamy. We have to, they have to be non-infamy war goals. But we can, of course, just liberate as many countries as possible. Catalonia. Navarra. There's, like, really no one who can join in terms of interests. War reps from Spain. Uh, and then I guess just liberate the last country, right? There's no front with Spain. This war does not pop off. We will mobilize this guy just to make sure that it doesn't pop off. Uh, nothing cheeky. Watch us get regulatory bodies on the first go after, like, just suffering in silence. Or, actually, not silence. We've been complaining quite a bit. Okay, uh... Oh, that's not a uh, modifier we were interested in. And, uh, so, we have a little bit of an option here. We just got a tech for this stuff. Let's actually delete the new. Newly acquired ones. Alright, so we just got a tech. And we're about to go to war, but this is an easy, like, nothing burger war. So I think we're going to turn on shrapnel artillery. Um, so that next time we have an actual important war, we have the thing already figured out. Do have quite a bit of bureaucracy. I think we incorporated all these boyos, though. Which, of course, uh, sorry to any Irish watching the video. I apologize. But we are incorporating them. Yep, yep, yep. Now, do you have... Come on, let me check what type of malaria you have. You don't have any malaria here. But you have severe malaria, so we will look to annex Cape Colony next. That way we can expand here and colonize here. Ensure you now owes us an obligation. Fantastic. Let's go to interactions. No, you won't want to join us. You're so close. We will absolve the obligation. And next time they will be ready to join us. They are just cautious. Can we invite them to the customs union? Not quite yet, but we can absolve the obligation. Oh, no, we're already friendly with them, so absolving the obligation won't help. We just have to wait for them to not be cautious. Congo backs down, yielding the war goal to us. We now have ourselves a Congo. Uh, we can switch these PMs over kind of later. Not too big a deal. We will want to switch this to cargo port because we just need those anyways. Let's get rid of this barracks as well while we're at it. And now, 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 let's annex Keep Colony. That way we can colonize into here. Which only accrues us one infamy. And Portugal can join, but they won't. Uh, so we just won't mobilize anyone. It's unnecessary. Actually, I can't resist mobilizing someone. Is a psychological affliction. Let's get him out of the house and onto the battlefield. Seems like a healthy uh, coping mechanism. We are hemorrhaging quite a bit of money. I'm hoping that our credit is growing faster than we're hemorrhaging money, but this might not be the case. We can, of course, if we look, we're still super righteous, and this is creeping kind of up, so we can increase the taxes. It's not quite what we want, but we can do it. Um, so this will just slow the bleeding. I think it'll slow it so that our growth outstrips uh, other thing, though. Why are you not profitable now? Boom moves are so expensive. We need to use more fertilizer. This is unfortunate. Uh, let's see if we're not spreading any tech. This is the goal of us going malaria prevention in a really inefficient way, or one of the goals. We're not not spreading any of those techs. We're not spreading philosophical pragmatism. And that's it. So maybe this is a bit of a mistake and we should just be, you know, trying to research the techs that are fast. 
kind of tempted to go improve fertilizer so that we can make better use of these fertilizers, but this is okay. A little bit painful, but it's okay. Um, we are, of course, trying to export them to increase the price of this fertilizer, but we just can't export enough. Maybe these will get out enough. We have a bunch more convoys now, so. And the Panama survey is almost done. At the same time, our bureaucratic shortfall is almost present. Uh, once we finish the Panama survey, we might jump in a whole bunch of, uh, oh, we are currently researching and Discord within the deep bourgeoisie. Don't really mind if their cloud gets gobbled up by the trade unionists, All the trade unionists are pretty powerful right now. So we'll just take the enactment chance. Come on, get over 20. I know you can. I want to take a screenshot. Please. Cape Colony is also going to give up soon, I assume. And then we'll be able to come in here and get these non... places that don't have any malaria. This will be such a banger if we if this works though with the malaria where we can cut off everyone from the congo and just have the congo to ourselves that'll be nutter uh they're just they're unrecognized major powers so we would want to kind of do a big war with them um the veiled protector is going to time out though there's no way we get them Ooh, but what's this well let's support the autos and then I assume they just back down here. Cape Colony backs down. And so now we can colonize that. I think we do have a port down here. We do. Don't need that naval base. Checking for barracks and naval bases. All right, that's fine. Now, maybe we shouldn't have joined this. I think it makes it so we can't declare a war, right? Uh, we can still declare it. Hell yeah, brother. We're going to annex them as well. No one can come in on our play. Uh, no one significant, at least. And so we'll just get the two infamy. We are still decaying infamy, so quite a bit. But this will be a very useful use of our infamy. Also, we won't have to worry about them revving later once they're under us. <clears throat> How fearful are you? You're minus 75 fearful. This almost certainly does not go through. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about this. This also will unlikely is unlikely to go through, but we will just mobilize and put on the front, just in case it does. Of course, they were colonizing, so to some degree we're slowing down our colonization, but we ha we'll have more pops, so we'll speed up our colonization. Let's see, were you doing anything? Ooh, you have gold fields. Yeah, no industrial stuff. Fantastic, that's exactly what we want to see. But what we will do is we will make a bunch of wood there because uh, kind of been having trouble with the wood. And then you need a railway. And then does anywhere else need a railway? Midlands. Man, we are popping off. Chile starts with Argentina. Now this war is not going to go through. Um, but just in case it does, or it's really unlikely this war goes through, we're just going to put someone on this front. This war somehow goes through? What? Alright, we're going to mobilize everyone, and, uh... Alright. That's wild. We're going to have Hugo land, and we're going to have someone else land in Sinai. Not Auburn Reed, so I guess it's Miles. We're going to put this guy on this front. And this guy on this front. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Can I take another tick of this? Tempted to switch to a... Uh... Oh, let's take a look. Oh, bam, we got it, boys. Boys and girl. We got the uh, the three best interest groups all happy and all powerful at the same time. This is the triple up. This is the thing. With it, we are getting propagandists. Uh, we are getting 
the society tech cost, the manufacturing tech cost, we are getting the increased workforce ratio, sorry, increased the manufacturing industry's throughput and increased workforce ratio, trade union is probably best. And then we're getting job creators with 20% capitalists and production tech cost is cheaper. Absolute banger. They're all happy largely on the back that we can have a ton of loyalists and we can have a ton of loyalists on the back that we uh, have this. And this we have in large part. Okay, it also, a big part of that is also our entire government is radicals, which is just a really strong effect, but also we have the Forbidden City. So, yeah, all that. Now, how close are you to protectorating? You're super close because you are no longer defending the borders. How close are you? Not very close. Panama survey is almost done. I have a feeling we're gonna get this. Just kidding, we can't pass laws, that's the real truth. All right, so much for not being able to pass laws. We will try again for proportional taxation once we can. I thought we would be able to already. It has not been enough time. I really like this malaria strat. I feel so smart. We could even pause expanding there. Once we once we cut it off. But it's just Portugal, who's a subject of ours, who we're going to annex soon, and we will completely cut it off the Congo. Argentina backs down naturally. So we have a bunch of, yeah, we got some of that, some of that. Kind of want to delete those. Let's just get rid of them. It's just a little bit. I know it fires people. It makes them mad. But we will give them other jobs. Logging jobs. Plenty of jobs. Jobs for everyone. Wild that this popped off though. Obligation from Kaken. Where are you, my boy? Let's put you. Uh, we can't change you to the customs union. Tragic. How about you? You're in the customs union. We're not bankrolling you though. And you were mad at each other. We are, of course, continuing to decay the infamy, which is nice. And I think what we will do is look to maybe go after these guys next. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly. Our market is getting big. These guys will stay powerful until they get under 18%. More than happy to keep bolstering them. We should enforce pretty quickly on them for taking the capital, which just expands our market because the Ottomans are in our market. So more than happy to uh, help a brother out. Qing declares interest in England. I suppose I should keep it there. It's a little bit of a... It's a little cheeky, don't you think? Don't you think, Great Ching? You're friendly, but still cautious, so we can't pull you in just yet. You have to be not cautious. Cock in, we can't get in. Formosa, we can't get in. We finished the Panama survey, which is nice, so where's our refund? Where's our 1k... And that. But of course we will build this canal and we will immediately sub it. Brunswick wants the lines, I don't think so. Giving them the business here. Mexico. Definitely want to help Mexico out as someone in our market. 
We might be able to even protectorate them like sometime soon. We have a big difference in ideology between our government. That's what's preventing it, largely. A good vintage, you're telling me, brother. We'll take the prestige. I want to make sure we join up here. I'm actually move this guy here. And this guy here. And that will be a thing for next episode. This episode, we've just been working on, you know, expanding the market. And uh, also... So the market's been expanding, we've been slowly getting into it, we've annexed a few of these subjects, you know, we annexed down here, uh, we annexed Argentina, we have, I, this I think was the previous episode we annexed here, but we also have this plan of cutting off all of this uh, from anyone else colonizing, which we've never been able to do before, because like all these countries are so fast, but if we can cut off all the entry points to the Congo, we will get all of it for ourselves, so this is really, really nice. Uh, potentially really really nice at least and so hopefully that works out we'll see we are cutting this off currently but it's really really slow going but this is why we're going way ahead of time on malaria prevention tech and so hopefully we get the malaria prevention tech and then we also start to get some gnat spread of some technology again this is kind of the reason for doing this is to utilize the natural spread mechanic you know someone else has modern nursing for example so where it's spreading to us you know, and we're looking for someone else to have some of these texts, like, for example, someone else now has rubber mastication, and so now it's spreading to us. So these sorts of things in the Grandmaster plan, but the big one is this, I think. We, we've we perfectly, we've balanced the three strongest interest groups to have powerful, and we're getting all of their bonus because they're both happy and powerful. This is really nice. Um, you know, also just kind of something you generally want to navigate towards as you're managing, you know, your expansion. We're still keeping the infamy low so we can get people into our customs union so we can protect our people so we can expand. Eventually, once you get strong enough, you just turn a corner and then you go to 1k infamy. But we're not a 1k Andy yet. So until then, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And have a good one.